Hello everybody, I am Daryl Howerton. Welcome to Women's Sports Cards, episode number one, titled, Hottest Alternative Asset of 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Women's Sports Cards, the hottest thing on the market right now. In 2020, it was the year of the sports cards rising from the NBA, the NFL, soccer, you name it. We saw historic sales, we saw historic rises, it was really just just a history making year you know for for trading cards in general but what's going on with women's sports cards in 2021 is probably dwarfing what happened last year on a bang for buck basis i mean when you're looking at rois return on investment percentages women's sports cards are the hottest thing around and and it's even blowing away the astronomical numbers set by the by the men's market last year I mean, you probably haven't heard much about it because women's sports cards account for less than 1% of the industry. So it's a very, very niche market out there. But when you break it down, what these women's superstar cards are selling, like a Serena Williams or a Mia Hammond, where we're seeing returns that we've never, ever seen before. And I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about that because it's not really being talked about anywhere. Uh, we're seeing, um, you know, it, it just rises for the, let's say the top 30 women superstar athletes have all seen rises within the last year of a thousand percent ROI. Uh, I did find a sports collector daily article talking about how eBay was revealing that there was an 1100 percent rise in WNBA trading cards. They also pointed out the astronomical rises of Alex Morgan cards and Serena Williams cards at 11,000 percent over the last two years. I mean, think about that. Where else can you get an ROI of 11,000% over a two-year period other than the women's sports card market? But that's what we're seeing take place, and you're really not hearing many people talk about it. I mean, granted, there is Cindy Dick, who is the, the queen of sports cards. She collected, uh, she still collects 19th and 20th century women's sports cards, the vintage ones, and is most known for that. And if you want to look into that market, I really highly suggest you go to YouTube and just type in the words rethinking sport history. Again, the words rethinking sport history and Sydney Dick will give you a great tutorial on what that's all about. But I'm mostly talking about 21st century cards and, and also cards from the 90s decade of the 20th century because that's more my time zone. That's more of the favorite athletes of you know females that I had. You know, the Serena Williams, the Steffi Grafs, Monica Sellis's, to today's Candace Parkers, Lauren Jackson's, Diana Taurasi's, and so on. So, um, but there's very few p people talking about that. There are some brilliant minds and rich people in, like Alexis Ohanian, the founder of Reddit. He's a big investor into women's sports cards, namely Serena Williams, because that's <laughs> that's his wife. He's her husband, and he's he's a big champion of investing into women's not only sports cards, but other businesses as well. And you're seeing um, Mia Hamm cards get, get bought by these type of people, uh, people like Rich Kleiman and Kevin Durant of 35 Ventures. They're investing into women's sports cards and really women's sports businesses in general, as we're really seeing them take off from bro both a professional and commercial aspect. I mean, we've never seen women's sports more popular than ever than 2021. And as a result, we're seeing the women's sports cars industry rise. Let me just tell you my start, how I got involved and how that's kind of, you know, led me to do the research and study I've done in trying to find some voices out there in the wilderness like myself who can give me information. So what little information I do know, I'm happy to share with you. I got started with Ruth Lawanson, uh, who I went to high school with at Clovis West and I went to college with at Fresno State, where she led the Bulldogs to an Elite Eight finish uh, in the NC2A tournament. She also went on to Olympic greatness and was the MVP of Major League Volleyball. I was a big fan of hers, wanted to get a card, looked on eBay, saw I could buy it for $5. I was also kind of stunned to find out that I could buy my other favorite athletes, like Steffi Graf and Monica Sellis, get their raw cards, rookie cards, you know, uh, for, for five, ten dollars a piece. Actually, I got both of these for ten dollars a piece. So for twenty dollars, I had two of the greatest tennis players of all time and also my Ruth Lawanson card. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm buying up 18 of my favorite 20 female athletes. I get them all for ten dollars a piece or lower. I get everybody but Serena Williams and Mia Hamm because Serena's rookie card cost a hundred dollars. Mia Hamm's rookie card cost 
cost 30. Again, these are SI for kids rookie cards because if you go back to women's sports cards before 1994, they were never issued in the tops or upper deck sets like the men's cards. If you wanted a women's sports card before that time zone, you had to get it from SI for kids. That was the rookie cards. And even, even after 1994, it was very, very rare that you would see a women's set made. So SI for kids became the go-to set for women's rookie cards. So I bought the $100 Serena Williams, I bought the $30 Mia Hamm, and I had them all raw, and they were uh, my uh, top 20 female athletes. I had them all in my collection, put them in a box, put them in a drawer, and just left it be. Then uh, I just put them away, and in January I was curious what the values of them, if they had gone up, because I had this theory that, you know, if, if men's sports cards were selling for a million dollars, like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Tom Brady, and so on, Who's to say a women's sports card couldn't be worth just say 10% of that one day? Maybe a Serena card will go for 100000 one day or a Mia Ham will. And if I can buy it at $100 and $30 now, it'll definitely be worth the investment. It was just a thought. I put the cards away. But when I came back and checked in January, I was blown away to see what the cards were going for. We saw a PSA 9 of Mia Ham's card sell for uh, over $1,000. Then the next day, we saw a Serena Williams PSA 9 card sell for $2,000. A PSA 10, soon after that, sold for $10,000. At that point, I knew it was real and that I should get my cards graded to see what they were. This one came back in SGC 8. This one came back not as good, but SGC 5. But this one, it only cost me $15 to grade. only cost me $30 to buy. So this $45 investment turned out to be worth two, dollars $300 right now as SGC 5. This card over here now goes for $3,200. There was a PSA 8 that sold for $3,200 last week. I only paid $100 for the card, $8 for tax, and $15 to have it graded. So that's incredible ROI on a, what is that, $123 investment. Probably close to $30,000, uh, th yeah, what is it, 3,000% 3, 3, ROI? Anyway, whatever the math is, I can't figure it out right now. You know, I got all these cards graded, and it was just... You know, and then that I was discovering that women's sports cards were taking off. You know, we saw the Steffi Graf card graded an 8. I saw the Monica Sellis at an 8.5. There are only seven of these type of cards in the nation, in the world, I should say, that have an 8 grade or better. And there's only four that have an 8.5 better of the Sellis version. When it comes to Serena Williams, there's only eight PSA 10s out there. These cards are so hard to grade at a PSA 10 level because of the perforation, because of the age factor. Um, these cards are really rare. And if you want a Serena Williams card, there's only eight tens in the PSA SGC Beckett universe. And there's only 14 nines. I mean, that's how rare it is. So to get an eight out there, I was very happy because it's probably one of only 40 cards out there like it. And same thing with the, even the, the greatest bat is a five, an SGC five. There's so few Mia Hams out there. There's a, I think there's only, actually, I know there's only one 10 out there. And last time I looked, there was only 31 nines in the Beckett SGC and PSA universe. So that's the type of thing we're dealing with here, especially when it comes to SI for kids cards. It's so rare to see high grades or even grades of women's sports cards in general. So I got the Venus Williams card graded. Even if it was a PSA 10, it would be selling for 1500 right now. But a seven still goes for a couple hundred dollars, two or $300. Not a bad investment when I pay $10 for the card and $15 for the grade. And that's the way you got to look at these things because there are so many of these deals still to be had out there that I highly recommend you do it. The Jackie Joyner Kersey, again, only a six, but her sister-in-law, Flojo, sold last week. And, you know, her 10 would go for over $1,000. So these are, even when they don't grade that high, they're still worth hundreds. Dominique Dawes got an SGC 7 grade. Cynthia Cooper got an SGC 6 and so on. So we were just seeing these things take off. And I was just, you know, I would get the Candace Parker card. It would be her first rookie card. Now, granted, uh, I would call this a prospect rookie card. I can get in my de definitions later because she's wearing a college uniform. But still, I think, you know, these cards definitely have value when it comes to it. Maybe not as much as her 2008 Rittenhouse card where she's wearing the L.A. Sparks uniform. You know, that card as a 10 might be worth $10,000 before the year's out. I wouldn't be surprised. 
I mean, this, you're seeing the same thing with Lauren Jackson rookie cards. This SI for Kids card is not her rookie card by any means. She had a 2001 Flare Ultra, and those are the type that are going for a thousand. So, not all SI for Kids cards are the rookie card to consider, but they do still maintain good value. And you look at Diana Taurasi, her 2004 Flare Ultra might outsell what these cards are going for, but a PSA 10 of this college card of her in a Yukon uniform still went for $1,500 recently. That means this 8.5 SGC and this 8 SGC are worth three, dollars $400 a piece and rising. So when it comes to the GOATs, the Lauren Jacksons, the Diana Taurasi's, the Candace Parkers, you know, those cards are escalating. And I was able to buy these for $5 or $8 a piece. I mean, that's the type of value that we're talking about that existed for these athletes back then and still exists for many women's athletes out there right now that, you know, there are bargains to be had. As, as I just continue on, the Maria Sharapova card. This is a 2002 sports card investor, uh, what I call a promo rookie, but it is the first rookie card ever produced of Maria Sharapova. Granted, in 2003, there was a foreign card made. There have been other promotional cards made. In 2004, Sports Illustrated for kids made a card of hers. 2005, the league rookie card, I would call her Ace Authentic. But this was the first one that came out and it got graded in SGC9. So, you know, this is a promo rookie card. And again, that's a the definitions I'll go over later on another video. But I'm a big fan of Daniela Hantuchova. Got an SGC9 here. Big fan of Michelle Wee, SGC9. Also, gymnastics are huge. Nastia Lukin got a SGC8 of hers. The Simone Biles one I got graded, but it, it didn't grade well. But if it had, the, those tens are going for thousands of dollars. The nines are even going for thousands of dollars of Simone Biles, the greatest gymnast ever. One of the greatest volleyball players ever, Logan Tom, got her both in a Stanford uniform and a USA. Got a 7 and an 8.5 grade. And then last but not least, got a Mia St. John Boxing Pioneer card. My movie buddy from Los Angeles. What's up, Mia? Uh, this card graded out as a 10 autograph and a 9 uh, on, the, on the card grade. So I was very ecstatic about that. These cards have been, you know, very special to me. These were the original ones I bought. I've since been investing into other ones, always going on the low key. I haven't sold any of my cards. I've just been watching the prices rise and getting them graded because getting them graded is is key to knowing what they're worth and also what they can sell for in the future. And if we keep on seeing these 1,000% ROIs, who knows where this goes? I mean, when we look at, uh, um, you know, last summer, I could not find a $1,000 women's rookie card. Uh, this one I bought for 100, this one I bought for 30. Now there are 30 different women who have sports cards over $1,000. Let me say that again. Last summer, August 1st, when I bought this card for $100, I could not find any. Now there are 30 different women with $1,000 cards. That is just mind-blowing to me. I mean, I could rattle off the names. We've got eight from the WNBA, Candace Parker, Lauren Jackson, Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore, Elena Deladon, uh, Brittany Stewart, um, who else? Sabrina Ionescu. We got eight from the UFC, Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate, Holly Holm, Amanda Nunes, Gina Carano, Paige Van Zant, Valentina Shevchenko, and Michelle Watterson. And we got five soccer players as well. Alex Morgan, Mia Hamm, Abby Wabak, Megan Rapino, Carly Lloyd. If we uh, jump over to golf, Michelle Wee, and now we see Lexi Thompson cribbing over that mark. And of course, gym gymnastics, Simone Biles, like I said before. That's 30 different women, and there's a bunch more knocking at the door who have $900 cards, $800 cards, $700, and so on. Dozens more who are going to crack that mark. The math is just unbelievable. Now, you can buy a card last August 1st for $100 and resell it now for $3,200. Like I said, the PSA 8 version of this card is 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 holding fast. It's thirty one sold for last week for thirty two hundred dollars. So you know the value is there. I would highly recommend if you're looking to a alternative asset of twenty twenty one, investing in women's sports cards because I don't think they're going anywhere, and um, they have a lot of room to grow. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll try to provide more information, more data, more statistical knowledge of analytics of where this thing is going and uh, like I said I'm a rookie in this I'm learning myself 
buying on the cheap with humble beginnings. And uh, anyway, I hope, I hope you enjoyed. Take care. God bless.